Change a question, change your life. When it comes to planning your life, I want to get you to learn to ask three questions now. And the first one is not, what am I going to do? And how many understand why now? Say I. The question you want to ask yourself is, what do I want? What's my outcome? What's my result? The word RPM, the first one is to get you focused on the target. The target is not the activity. The activity can change. It's what the, what's the result I'm after. Human beings have a capacity they've undersold themselves on. We think that the outside world determines how we feel. If, if people have to behave a certain way, if your husband or your wife or your kids or your coworkers or whoever, your boss has to behave a certain way for you to be happy, and if they don't, you're unhappy, then you're always gonna be unhappy because the more people around you, the more they're gonna change that because they're all human, right. right? And if you have to be a certain way to be happy, <laughs> you're gonna violate it too. So my invitation is, as great as it is to achieve, more important to enjoy. And if you can enjoy every moment in that state, when you're feeling loving and playful and passionate and curious and awe, you treat other people a hundred times better than when you're feeling frustrated, pissed off, overwhelmed, worried, stressed, or feeling sorry for yourself. You need a strategy, but that's not the first place you should look at. It's the first place all of us look. It's our inherent thing. You wanna lose weight? Well, how do I do it? I'm gonna grow my business, how do I do it? It's, it's instinctive, we've been trained to think that way, but the problem is the how-to is usually not that complex because strategy is wonderful. I'm a strategist, I spent my whole life figuring out strategies. Since we both know a strategy could save you a decade, right? And business strategy could save you, you know, it could make an interesting success and failure. But most people have strategies available or they could get them or you could create them. But the problem is you got a story and your story is why it isn't working. And the story is I've tried what? Everything. If you tried everything, you'd be fit. There's always a story. And what I tell people is, you know, if you can just divorce the story of your limitation and marry the truth of your unlimited capacity, then the whole game changes. Really learning to train yourself to be in an ideal state where the best of you comes out to yourself, for your family, for your mission, for your world, for your coworkers. To me, that's one of the most important decisions in life to make. You ask me of all the people I've met, all things I've seen, you know, what creates a magnificent life you know, everybody has goals and dreams that are different. Whatever is right for people is what I want them for themselves. I don't want them to be like me or you or anybody else. I want them to have their dream. But to have it, you need two skills. You need number one, to have the science of achievement. It's a science. You have to know how to take your vision and make it real. If you know exactly what it is you really want, what you desire, what you're really after, clarity is power. The more clear you are on specifically what you want, the faster your brain can get you there. Did you achieve the outcome? Yeah, when you're that general, you may be, you think you're not getting your goal, you are. The way you language your goal, the way you think about it, you're receiving it. All right, so first of all, I just wanna talk about the notion of doing hard things. So doing hard things is critically important in terms of earning self-respect, um, building those calluses on your mind, as David Goggins calls them, to have the ability to stick with something when it gets difficult. It is such an incredibly powerful skill set, and the only way you're gonna get it is if you do hard things. Um, now, I want to be clear that I don't love cold showers. I hate cold showers. Cold showers never got easier. Uh, in fact, I would say over time, it really began to chip away at my soul. So I did cold showers every day for one year and three months. I'd promised myself I would do it for a month. So in ending up doing it for 15 months, I was pretty stoked. Uh, now I don't do cold showers anymore. And I'll go back and explain um, the process I was using when I was doing cold showers. Now what I'm doing is water submersion. So cold water submersion. That I find is way more powerful. It is much more difficult, but in a weird way, it's uh, more enjoyable. So when I was doing the cold showers, it went like this. I would get in, stand, bucket naked, dry shower, and just will myself to crank that on because there was nothing worse than standing dry knowing that that cold water is gonna hit you. That was by far the worst is that anticipation of like, do you stop and take a couple breaths? Do you just get in there and crank it on? Like without hesitation, it was so powerful to have to face that down day after day after day, it really was pretty incredible. Uh, so that made it more difficult. I did not find it hard if I was taking a warm shower. So um, 
Wim Hof, the Iceman, recommends that you do a warm shower like normal, but then you end on, he suggests to start with 30 seconds, you end cold. I actually didn't find that that hard. And so because that wasn't hard, I wanted to do it the hardest way possible by starting just dry and going straight for the cold. So that was how I did it the whole time. Um, I would though end on warm most of the time. Every now and then if it was a hot day or something, I might uh, do cold, warm, cold. Um, it just depended. So there is something about a entirely cold shower that's quite powerful, but I found it very difficult to warm up after. Um, and so that can slow the rhythm of a day down and I just didn't want to give that much time to it. Okay, so I do that for 15 months. I end up growing this resentment towards my shower. I didn't like the way that felt. I wanted to get back to actually enjoying my shower. And I thought, you know, I have always had a lingering notion in my mind that it would be far better on a physiological level to get the, the um, response that you're looking for at a cellular level from true submersion. And since I have a swimming pool that for most of the year it's not heated, I thought, well, I'll just start going in the pool um, during the winter months. Um, pool gets down to about 58 degrees. That's plenty cold, let me tell you. And um, it is so much more intense than a cold shower because there is no part of your body that isn't getting the life force sucked out of it by the cold. And so, one, you feel like a total badass doing it, and you get that self-confidence, you get that, yeah, like I'm here, I'm doing hard things, I'm pushing through. So that gave me a lot of confidence that it was having the kind of physiological effect that I was hoping it was have. Um, so if you can do submersion, I highly recommend it. Um, I would stay in the pool water again, it was about 58 degrees. I would stay in that. The longest I did was 22 degrees, uh, 22 minutes, excuse me. And by the time I got out, I was moving so slowly and my teeth, like I was so afraid I was gonna bite my tongue because my teeth were chattering so hard. Um, and so I thought, okay, that's a little too extreme. So I started backing it off. Uh, and then the important part is to warm up naturally. So I wouldn't end up taking a warm shower until say 45 minutes later um, to give my body uh, the command that it had to warm up on its own. Um, that was, I think, more powerful than the, the cold shower. So now I'm more focused on submersion. You know what, I'm not just a student. You know what I'm saying? That just happened to me in this grade. I'm not just here at the school. I'm here for a reason. You know what I'm saying? And you gotta tell yourself, man, I feel like I've been pushed down in the dirt. I feel like people have been stumping on me. I feel like stuff has been raining on me. But you didn't realize this, my young friends, you was just a seed. So you gotta tell yourself, no, 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 no. I haven't been pushed down in the dirt and I haven't been stumped on. I've been planted and I've been placed in this pot for a reason. And we are at this arena here to be able to have a conversation to say, what does it look like to go to that next level? And so I need you all to do the same thing. When you leave here, if you feel like you're in a weird place, if you feel stuck, if you feel like, you know what, I, I just feel like I need some help, you get the help you need. That how strong and how bold and how powerful you are. The fighter jet mentality is that someone who is just determined, relentlessly obsessed in achieving an outcome in the face of all adversity. I've always had this relentless mentality. And if you say I can't do something, if I fail, if I you know mess up, it just motivates me even more. I just become even more hungry. At some point, you gotta be tired of not being number one. You have to accept what you're not. You have to, and people don't want to do that. And that's the only way you can fix it. You have to accept it first before you can go on the journey. As you elevate your aim, you create a judge at the same time. The new ideal, which is an ideal you, becomes a judge because it's above you, right? And then 
you're, you're terrified of it, maybe. Who they want to be, they act like they are, but they're not because they haven't fixed all this stuff yet. You got to fix this first before we can start our journey in life. Get rid of everything about yourself that isn't perfect. You can either live your dreams or live your fears. And I think the majority of people actually are not living their dreams, but are living their fears. Fear is driving society because that's the only way you can control a society. If you focus on your fear, fear will become your reality. I want to ask you a question. What are your fears? What are you afraid of? What are you scared of? Because we all have fears, don't we? We all suffer from fear. The reason that most people are not living out their true potential is because of fear. You cannot just let that fear freeze you. You just have to turn that into again the positive. You know, you cannot let it, you know, you know, become so overwhelmed that you cannot do anything. If you just focus on that moment where you're doing, then you'll be okay. And Einstein said those who've never failed have never tried. The reason most people don't take action is simple. It's fear. Fear of failure, fear of success. Perfection equals paralysis. In my experience, things hardly ever go perfectly, even if you want them to. The stuff goes wrong, that's just life. When everything seems to be going against you, remember that the airplane takes off against the wind, not with it. Don't just sit there and complain about what I can't do. When you walk this journey, you must know that it's gonna go down before it comes up. But when it comes up, it's gonna go so much higher than you've ever been. And when you understand the difference between no longer focusing on being a champion and instead of delivering a championship performance, everything will change. Because it's the people who build themselves into someone who can give a championship performance that win.